Hi guys, I'm Tom and this is Watercolour Bites. I'm making these videos to be little hits of watercolour info to help you progress your own painting. So let's roll the opener and take a look. We're taking a break from all the theory to look at the medium itself. And of course we have things like composition, good drawing, tonal values, colour and edges, etc. All of these things being the most important foundational principles of all painting, but with the medium of watercolour specifically, for me, there is something that rises above everything else as the single most important thing. And actually it's two things under the same umbrella. Those being how much water and pigment is in your brush. And we could also call this the paint consistency of our mix on the palette. And then how much water and pigment is on your page or more accurately at what stage of drying is the wash you're working into or working on top of. So the important thing being to really focus on getting a feel for these different paint consistencies and the different stages of drying. And in turn, how these affect the outcome of the paint in any given area. So when I first started teaching watercolour a few years ago, I would explain this in very simple terms of three consistencies for both the brush and the page. And I found this a great place to start for people who are new to watercolour. However, it lacked kind of subtlety and there is room to be more specific while still keeping it easy to understand. But then I began to expand on these terms and then eventually I came across the watercolour clock. So this was created by a wonderful watercolour painter called Joseph Zabukvich and it's a fantastic visual representation of these exact principles. And whilst this really does come down to having a feel for the water and the pigment and the brush all together, which of course comes with practice, this certainly isn't some kind of esoteric painting initiation only for the experienced. It's actually a really logical and usable system that anyone can start to implement whatever their level or ability. So let's take a look at these terms and then we're going to look at them in action. So we are going to start off with the paint consistency of the mix on our palette or in our brush. So first up we have very watery, so lots of water and some pigment, although it could even be clear water. The consistency is completely free flowing and in watercolour clock this is referred to as tea. And as Joseph says, this is not the colour but the consistency of the paint. Then next up we have a consistency that is still very free flowing on the palette but it just has a little more substance to it and a little bit more body and we're kind of calling this nice milky or even creamy coffee. And now we move up in consistency with generally less water and more pigment. And you could of course give these your own titles. There's plenty of non-dairy alternatives too. The point is the consistency and finding an easy to understand system that works for you. So the watercolour clock goes next into full fat kind of milky consistency, which has some flow to it when you tilt the palette. And then we move up into double cream where the paint feels much stiffer with much more body and substance to it. And then finally we have what in the clock is called butter. So for me this can be neat paint straight out of the tube uh, plus sometimes a little bit of residual water in the brush. But ultimately I like the term Marmite. It's kind of solid and sticky and it won't move at all if you tilt the palette or you could call it Vegemite if that's your bag. One point is that with all of this so far, you are altering also the value or the lightness or the darkness of your mixture. More water obviously means lighter and then less water means darker. So in very simple terms, the less flowing the paint, the darker it will be. But we're going to focus more on the painting effects in this particular episode. And then there will be another one where we look at actually lightening and darkening watercolors. So next up, let's look at what is happening on the paper. And this is basically what stage of drying is an area at. So very first we have wet and this is completely free flowing, just laid down watery wash. And then after some drying, we have what in the clock is called moist. So this wash is not completely free flowing and full of water, but it still has plenty of drying time left. And it may still flow a little bit and create a bead if you're working on a tilt. And then drier still, we are gonna call that damp. So this will have dried a good amount. It'll be almost dry and the pigment has pretty much settled, but there will still be a slight sheen of water to it. Just a side note, this is the real danger stage of any wash and we're gonna to get to that in a minute. Then very finally, of course, we have dry and this couldn't be simpler. It's either the fresh paper or a previous wash that is now totally dry. 
The big thing to consider next is how these different combinations of paint and page create different effects and the way that we can use these as watercolorists. So I could carry on rambling about the interaction between these things, but actually it's going to make way more sense if we look at this in action in a painting. So first up, we're working on dry paper and we're using very, very watery tea consistency and also we're kind of grading up to the coffee consistency where we've just got a little bit more pigment and we're dropping coffee consistency into tea consistency. There's loads of freedom here to keep chucking the paint around, throw in some other colours and we can get some really beautiful gradations and transitions of flowing colour. We won't get much definition at this stage, just lots of softness, but we can really let the paint do its thing. Now on the shoulder, after laying in this lovely kind of tea consistency, I've now got wet page and I'm dropping in the more solid coffee kind of consistency of paint. And then eventually I even move up to the slightly more solid bodied, not so runny, creamy kind of milk paint. And I'm dropping that into the wet areas as well. You can see on the palette that the consistency is much deeper, much stronger. And I've still got lots of lovely flowing colors, but you can see I'm getting more intensity of color and a slightly deeper, darker tone. And then as the wash dries, we're moving into dropping creamy milk into moistness. And that's when I'm getting even darker paint and even more solid consistency. You can see after the page has dried off completely, the colors all slightly lighten. Then on top of this now dry previous wash, I'm going in with that kind of creamy milk consistency, which gives us a lovely kind of solid half tone, although it's still got lovely transparency to it because of the nature of the paint. And what I'm basically doing here is mapping out the shadows within the face. So we keep the shapes very, very simple. We keep the paint very simple. We keep the same paint consistency, the same color and the same tone. And then as this wash begins to dry, you'll see that we're moving into having a existing wash on the page that's maybe either wet or moist. And we're gonna start dropping even more kind of initially creamy milk consistency with a bit more body. And then as time goes on, we're gonna start dropping in that kind of double cream consistency into this moist wash. And you'll see how we just now start to get some slightly deeper tones, but we're still not getting lots of definition. We're into kind of double cream into a nearly dry wash here. And you'll see we're starting to get even more definition, even deeper tones, and the painting just starts to feel a bit more formed. But the really important point here is you will see a recurring kind of pattern to how we're working. We lay in a slightly wetter wash and as that dries, we drop in progressively stronger consistency paint with less water. So this area of hair and ear is a great opportunity to show you some of these processes. Initially, I'm laying down a very tea coffee consistency. Then as this wash dries and it's got that moistness on the paper, I'm going in with the double cream consistency and you can see it really starts to push the tones deeper, but we're still getting lots and lots of lovely softness. You'll see that the paint isn't melting as much into the wash. So we're getting some sense of definition, but still lots of lovely soft edges. Then as that wash continues to dry into the damp stage, I'm still working with double cream, but we get even less melting of the paint and therefore even more definition. I mentioned earlier that working into this nearly dry damp wash can be a real danger stage of any watercolour. The pigment has almost settled, so if we start going in and fussing the paint or working it too hard or flooding it with too much water from the brush, it will disturb the settled pigment and make a real mess. This is when we get that muddy, overworked look to the paint and we lose the freshness of the wash. But saying that, you can get some really beautiful soft edges at this stage, some lovely effects. And then very finally, as the wash is nearly dry, we dive in with that really rich, deep Marmite consistency to really beef up the darks and just give that little extra bit of definition. And now we're going to follow the same process again on the shoulder. We've got a dry wash. We start with the creamy consistency and then as that dries and is nearly dry, we start to work in the double cream um, and then very, very eventually we work in the Marmite. So it's that exact same process again. That being that as any given wash dries, we tend to work then into it with increasingly more pigment and less water, i.e. working from tea to marmite. And at the same time, we're obviously getting darker with our tonal values and creating more form. And that's the basic process of watercolor. 
So one final point regarding the moist wash, which is where it's just dried off a touch, the paper has still got lots of water in it and we can drop in lots of other colours, we can get lots of lovely gradation and variegation, but it's still a really safe time to play around with the paint. And then depending on the consistency of the paint that we're using in the brush, we can get varying degrees of lost and soft edges, as well as some more solid mid-tones, as the paint won't melt in as much as the earlier wash when it was wetter. So there we go guys, I hope you found this useful. If so, please do consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified of all of the upcoming videos I have planned. And please do feel free to share this on social media with anyone else you feel may enjoy it as well. So I do firmly believe that if you can get to grips with these two things and how they interact with each other, it will go a huge way to improving your painting, whatever your style or subject. However, I would love to hear what other principles, techniques and approaches you think or feel are important as watercolourists. Please do let me know in the comments below, along with any other questions or requests for topics that you would like to see me cover. And don't forget, you can see any of the paintings covered in these videos in a much longer format with full narration over on my Patreon page. And there's also loads of other exclusive content on there. All of the links are in the descriptions below. So until next time, guys, happy living, Happy creating and I will see you soon.